I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm in the middle of a hot deal. Mm-hmm. Some boys I know are interested in the big money, and they figure if we put all our capital in the gun, we ought to make a killing. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Quarrelsome Quartet. Before the Falcon starts on tonight's case, I'd like to say just a word about something extra delicious. Kraft mayonnaise. Here's really true mayonnaise at its finest. One taste will tell you that. Just one taste of delicate, exquisitely flavored Kraft mayonnaise will tell you that here is mayonnaise to delight even the fussiest cook. Try it. Try it and see for yourself. Tomorrow when you shop, get a jar of wonderful tasting Kraft mayonnaise. And now, the case of the quarrelsome quartet. It's late evening in New York, and in a shabby apartment on Manhattan's west side, a short, heavy-set boy named Dixie Taylor watches his companion, Georgie Reynolds, attack an age-old problem, how to dispose of an empty bottle. But George is equal to the occasion, for spying the fireplace, he comes up with a practical solution. Well, I guess there's one way to get rid of your empty. Anybody ask you, Taylor? No. All right, so shut your face. Hazel? Hey! You want me, George? No, I was just rehearsing. I'm going in for hard calling. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I was busy. Well, I hope I wasn't interrupting anything important. No, honey. Get me another bottle. Well, darling, don't you Didn't think... I tell you something? All right, George. It's one of my bedroom closets. Well, what are you staring at, Dixie? I was just wondering about Hazel. Well, don't. You're going to do any wondering think about Martinez. Oh, Lord, he'll be here. Yeah, when? He was due an hour ago. Well, maybe he had some trouble finding Saunders. Oh, that's just ducky. What goes on with you guys, anyway? Do I have to well, tell that's you... That's probably Martinez and Saunders now. Hazel? Yes, George? Didn't you hear that? Well, I was trying to get... Never mind the alibis, that. Martini. Your boyfriend here? Yeah, we're in the kitchen. Come on in. Bring your friend with you. Hi, Georgie. Hello, Taylor. Hello, Louie. Well, you took your own sweet time getting here, Martinez. Well, I have a little bit trouble finding Mr. Saunders here. Gentlemen. Bring in a couple of chairs, Hazel. Yes, dear. All right, now go on. Go on. Beat it. But, darling... I said beat it. These fellas and I have some business to discuss. Uh, well, Martinez, did you tell Saunders what I lined up? No, I think was well, maybe better I leave that for you. It's a snatch, Saunders. A what? A snatch. That's what I thought you said. Well, it's been nice knowing you, gentlemen. Sit down, Saunders. No, thanks. I'm not interested. It cost you something to listen? All right. Ever hear of Big Joe Gallagher? Well, enough to know that if he's the party you got in mind, you can include me out, as the saying goes. Now, don't be a jerk, Saunders. Sure, Gallagher's a big rackets boy, but that's just why we can get away with this. You're crazy. Now, uh, look, Martinez, why didn't you tell That's me that... Georgie Finish. Dixie and I used to work for Gallagher. We know what makes him tick. A guy in his position would never yell copper. Yes, but there's one thing you're overlooking. From what I know of Mr. Gallagher, he never goes anywhere without two or three of his boys. How are you going to separate the wheat from the chaff? I've got it all figured out. Gallagher's a ladies' man, see? Now, if a babe were to call him up and arrange a blind date, it's dollars to donuts he'd go for it. I doubt it. Don't tell me. I've seen it work a dozen times. You got the girl? Yeah. Yeah, Hazel, the one who let you in. I suppose she talks. She wouldn't dare. Besides, she doesn't have to know what's going on. I'll tell her the whole thing's a gag. Where do I come in? Hazel will arrange to meet Gallagher at the 49 Club. You and Martinez will pick him up. What about you and Taylor? Now, we can't take a chance. He knows it. Well, what do you say, Saunders? You think this will work, Martinez? Why not? Georgie's got all the angles figured out. <laughs> so it would seem. Okay, gentlemen. Deal me in. Yeah? I'd like to speak to Mr. Gallagher, please. Uh, who wants him? Well, he wouldn't know me, but... You can tell him I'm a friend of Gloria Wilson. 
I never heard of her. Are you, Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, that's right. Well, Gloria made me promise to look you up when I got to New York. I'm sorry, sister. I don't know anybody by that handle. She was a chorus girl at Pirandello's. Hey, wait a minute, baby. What's your name? Hazel Wolf. Uh, you look anything like you sound, Hazel? Oh, now, really, Mr. No, Gallagher. kidding, because if you do, I'd like to see you. Uh, I'm afraid that's out of the question, Mr. Gallagher. I'm flying to the coast tonight. Uh-huh. What time? Quarter after one. Well, that still gives us three hours to get acquainted. What do you say, baby? Mm, all right. But uh, you'll have to meet me here. You see, I'm expecting friends. Oh, that's okay. Where are you? It's a little place called the 49 Club. Do you know it? No, but I'll manage. Uh, uh, what color dress you wearing? Blue. <laughs> My favorite color. Okay, Hazel, I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, who, me? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to have no seen a blonde around, huh? Uh, blue dress? Yeah, that's right. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Oh, uh, who are you? Hazel's cousin. Didn't she tell you we're having a little farewell party in her honor? Well, she said something about friends. Oh, now don't get frightened. We'll be pushing off in a few minutes, and that'll give you enough time to talk to Hazel alone. Uh, where is she? She's in the back room with the rest of the family. Well, let's go. Uh, right down here. Uh, by the way, fella, I don't believe I caught your name. Well, it's the same as Hazel. <laughs> Related on your father's side. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, here we are. Hiya, fella. Hello, Louie. This is uh, Hazel's friend. Pleasure to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Where's Hazel? Oh, she just stepped out for a minute. Well, well where's the rest of the crowd? Crowd? Yeah, her cousin told me she had a flock of relatives down here. <laughs> Never believe Saunders. He's a big joker. Saunders? I thought his name was Walsh. What goes on here, anyway? Watch you, Just keep those hands where they are, Mr. Gallagher. Frisky Martinez. Get your hands ah, off me. Don't get excited, Mr. Gallagher. He's bad for your blood pressure. He's clean? He's now. Good. Would you be kind enough to accompany us, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, no. You're not getting me to walk out of here. Well, as long as you feel... Let's go. You have to hand it to him, Martinez. He said he wasn't walking out of here, and uh, he was right. <laughs> You asked me that just five minutes ago, Joe. Now, don't get smart. Think anything could have gone wrong? Not a chance. What you tell Galka's wife? Just what you told me. I said we had a husband, and if she wanted them back, she was to dig up a hundred grand. Yeah, maybe I should have gone for it myself instead of sending Saunders a martini. What are you worried about, Georgie? They managed the snatch, all right. Yeah, but how do I know that they're in? George. Able... I'll get it. Hello, George. You got it, Saunders? What does this bike look like? All right, let me have it. How to go on? Oh, all the clock works. As soon as Mrs. Gallagher gives us the money, I give her the key and took her away to find her husband. Oh, nice work, Louie. Yes, I guess congratulations to an order all around. One hundred thousand dollars. Just think of it. You think of it, Saunders. Because that's as close as you're getting to it. What do you mean, George? Well, I'll tell you, friend, it's like this. The boys and I had a little talk. And you decided why split four ways, huh? Well, you catch on fast. But didn't you think I'd have anything to say about that? Or I put away that gun, Saunders. Uh, yeah, yeah. Georgie was only clowning. Yes, I'll bet. You know, I'm a little surprised at you, Dixie. Uh, look, if, if we were going to double-cross you, you think we'd send you for the dough? Sure, that doesn't make sense. Does it? But... No, don't move, Parsi. Just drop the gun. Nice going, Martinez. Well, Mr. Smart Guy, what do you say? <laughs> That's enough, George. Go on, son. It's it. All right. Gentlemen, if this little get-together hasn't been pleasant, it, it has been informative. Well, I'll be very glad to show you what I learned next time we meet. looking for a Michael Waring, private detective called the Falcon. Well, you picked the right place. Oh, are you... Mm -hmm. Come on in, Angel. Thank you. Sit down. 
I suppose I should introduce myself. Uh, it's customary. Uh, well, my name is Hazel Walsh. Hazel Walsh? Oh, that's right. Who recommended me? Uh, well, I remembered hearing about Falcon years ago. And you filed the information away for this more convenient date, hmm? Uh, yes. <laughs> Are you available for a case? At $50 a day in expenses, I am. What's your problem? Well, it's really not my problem, Mr. Waring. I'm... A girlfriend of mine is engaged to some man, and she believes that he's done something... Uh... Crooked? Of course not. All right, let's call it unethical. Go on. Well, uh, if the man ever was caught, could they force my friend to be a witness against him? They certainly could. Even though she found out about it by accident? Doesn't make any difference, Miss Walsh. Well, isn't there anything she can do? Nope. Only if she were married to him could she refuse to testify. Well, if we got married... I mean, if they got married, I... <laughs> Let's use the first example, Hazel. Hmm? It'll be easier on us both. Now, look here, Mr. Williams. No, you look, Hazel. You're obviously in some sort of a jam. Now, what is it? I tell you, you're wrong. What did your boyfriend do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. I suppose you tell me his name. It's... Uh, Harry Prescott. Come on, Hazel. What's his name? Well, you have no right to question me like this. No, but the police have. Look at... You're not going to call him. No? Well, it, it's... George Reynolds. He the same Georgie Reynolds who used to run with the Gallagher mob? No. Uh, no, it's not that one at all. Uh, well, suppose you introduce us and let me see for myself. Hmm? I'm an easy man to convince. Well, sounds as though Mike follows that good old theory that seeing is believing. Of course, that's a pretty smart idea, I think. And it's a good one for everyone to follow when it comes to food. For example, I can tell you how satiny smooth Kraft mayonnaise is. What an amazing, creamy, rich texture it has because of the special way Kraft blends it. But to really appreciate just how smooth Kraft Kitchen Fresh mayonnaise is, get a jar and see for yourself. That way you can taste for yourself, too. You won't have to take my word for it that Kraft mayonnaise is especially good with a delicate, delightful flavor, the result of careful blending of only the finest oils and eggs, the most fragrant vinegars and spices. Yes, the best way to tell is to taste Kraft mayonnaise yourself. Try it on a cool and colorful salad of hollowed-out tomatoes topped with spicy deviled eggs and garnished with fresh and tangy watercress. It's really delicious. So tomorrow when you shop, get a jar of Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Whether you're serving a simple, everyday kind of salad or a fancy company special, you'll enjoy it more with true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft mayonnaise. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Fifteen minutes have passed since Hazel Walsh introduced herself to Mike Waring. And now the two are on their way to Georgie Reynolds' apartment. Strangely enough, Miss Walsh doesn't seem too delighted by the trip. I don't know why I let you talk me into this, Mr. Waring. Simple, Hazel. You're the kind of girl who's taken such a licking you could be talking to anything. That's a lie. All right, then why did you bring me here? Because I thought you could help George. Well, if it's the same George I think it is, you'll have to get yourself another boy. Whatever made you tie up with a guy like that? I don't think that concerns you. That's the place? Yes. Can I help? No, thanks. Where's the light switch? Uh, a little over to your right. Have you got it? Yep. Stop that. I saw him. Now you stay where you are. Is he? Yeah, there's nothing else, but Someone gave it to him right for the temple. George! George! Look, you get a grip on yourself. How can you talk to me like that when my fiancé's been murdered? I can talk to you like that because it's not your fiancé. What? This is a boy named Dixie Taylor. Now will you behave... some mistake. What's the matter, Hazel? You disappointed it isn't, George? Of course not. Did you know Taylor? Uh, well, he was a friend of George's. I saw him around here once or twice. Who else was a member of this fraternity? Uh, just a man named Louis Martinez. Oh. Well, that's some select group. I've heard of all of them. Did they blackball anyone recently? I don't know what you mean. Did your boyfriend and Martinez cross anyone lately? I don't think so. Hazel, you better stop lying. You don't do it very well. Well, there was a Nick Saunders... Good-looking boy, around 35. 
Yes. What did they fight about? I don't know. You think Saunders might have killed Dixie? I suppose so. How about George? No. Hazel, don't be a sucker. You think he'll appreciate your loyalty? Why don't you ask him, Willie? George. All right, I will. Isn't it nice of her not to suspect you, George? Not to suspect me of what? Take a look under that blanket. Oh. Who did it? That's just what I was asking. You got any suggestions? Larry or what? Say, who invited you here anyway? She didn't. Oh, is that so? Darling, I was only thinking of you. Now, that's the truth, George. Never have I seen a woman show so much concern. All right, Waring, beat it. I don't need you. How about Hazel? She don't need you either. Go on, Hazel. Tell him. Uh, I made a mistake, Mr. Waring. I'm sorry. You mean that? Yes. Okay. So be it. Oh, when the police show up, tell them I have to leave. It'll huh? be a pleasure. But, listen, Georgie, I, I know what you're going to say. Do you? Oh, darling, I was only thinking of you. I, I know what you, Dixie Martinez, did to Saunders. That's why I went to Waring. Well, that was smart. But I was worried about Saunders. And I'm worried about you, Hazel. You think you'll ever learn to keep your mouth shut? Or do I have to pitch you? Oh! Corbett, this is Mike Waring. Ah, what's on your mind, Mike? Listen, what kind of caper has Georgie Reynolds pulled recently? Well, there's some talk going around that Big Joe Gallagher was snatched last week. Oh, that's crazy, Sergeant. I saw him on 48th Street yesterday. I know, but that's the story we got. According to one of my pet stoolies, his missus laid out a hundred grand to get him back. You think Georgie Reynolds was behind us? Wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, can't you do anything? You tell me how when we got no proof. Mrs. Gallagher hasn't seen fit to make a complaint. Was Nick Saunders in on it? You seem to know more about it than I do. What do you know about Saunders? Not quite enough, Sergeant. I'll let you know the minute I learn more. Oh, by the way, uh, there is a body over at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. Go over and pick it up like a good fellow, will you? Remember me? Oh, sure, sure. You're the uh, Falcon, aren't you? Mm hmm. Can I come in? Why not? Sorry, I can't offer you anything. Well, you never know unless you try. All right, Waring, what's on your mind? Well, I heard you and George Reynolds had a little trouble last night. Uh, you must be thinking of two other guys. Well, what gets me is why you took it out on Taylor. Taylor? Yeah, haven't you heard? He's dead. Not my old pal, Dixie. Well, 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 what do you know? I know you better have a pretty good alibi handy. Come on, Saunders, get your coat. We're going to headquarters. Uh, just brief me on one thing, Waring. You're a private detective, aren't you? That's right. Now, where did you get off pushing people around? It's my hobby. You're going to get your coat or will you go like that? Oh, act your age. Put away the gun, Saunders. Put it away. Wait, Wait, cut it out. Go on, drop it. Oh, drop it. it. All right, now, what do you say, friend? Do we take that little ride I mentioned? Okay, Waring. But don't be surprised if someday I return the favor. Is there a guy named Mike Waring here? That's me, Inspector. Come in here. I want to talk to you. Okay. See you later, Sergeant. Hell bad. Sit down, Waring. Well, thanks. Sergeant Corbett tells me you're the boy who brought in Saunders. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Well, I'm glad you got a kick out of it, because I just talked to headquarters about you. What for? To see how they feel about attempted blackmail. What are you talking about? Didn't you try to shake down Saunders? Is that what he claims? No, I can put two and two together myself. Well, you ought to go back to school, Inspector. There's something wrong with your arithmetic. I doubt it. When you start shoving a guy around just because he's got a record, there's only one answer. Oh, you're crazy. I tell you, Saunders killed Dixie Taylor. How? He shot him, that's how. From Philadelphia? Oh, what are you talking about? Going to the corner, Dixie Taylor died at 8.30 p.m. So what? Well, at 8.25, Saunders was picked up by the Pennsylvania State Police for carrying a rod without a license. And he wasn't released until two hours later. Now, who doesn't know his arithmetic? Hello, Mike. Huh? Hazel. How did you get in here? The superintendent let me in. 
I've got to talk to you. Now, that makes us even, Angel, because I want to talk to you. Look, you've got to drop the case. Now, that raises a problem. How can I drop something I've never been paid for in the first place? I don't understand. I mean, if I'm going to work for free, I might as well do it for myself. You can't do that. Well, I'd like to see someone stop me. What's Georgie's phone number? Why? Because I want to talk to him. Uh, what about? The murder of Dixie Taylor. He doesn't know anything about it. Are you kidding? Now, what's the number? Come on, Hazel, I'm not clowning. It's Raleigh 499. Now, cheer up, baby. When I get through with Mr. Reynolds, he won't ever lay a hand on you again. You don't hear me complain. <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me you love the guy. I do. Hello. Uh, is that you, Reynolds? Ah, uh, this is Louis Martinez. Who are you? Mike Waring. Let me talk to George. I'm afraid that he's out of the question. Listen, Martinez, if I have to come over there... He still won't do you any good. He's dead. He's what? Yeah. Someone paid him a dose of strychnine about an hour ago. And somehow we didn't seem to agree with him. <laughs> Martinez was lying. I suppose we go over and check. Oh, George, oh, come on, Hazel. Get a grip on yourself. You're better off without him. Oh, how can you talk that way? Because it's the truth. He was no good. That's a lie. Oh, don't give me that. You knew he was the brain behind the big Joe Gallagher snatch. No, you're wrong. Who are you kidding? Well, so incidentally, what happened to the loot? The loot? The ransom money Mrs. Gallagher paid off. How would I know? Well, you would if anybody would. You can't keep it, Angel. I didn't intend to. Then where is it? Well, they, they didn't tell me, but I... I watched them through the keyhole. Where did they put it? Under the middle cushion of the sofa in George's apartment. Okay, let's get it before someone else gets the same idea. I wouldn't be surprised if we're a little late now. You know what Mike said just now about getting there first? Sounds like the race that usually goes on in my house for the last piece of cold chicken in the refrigerator. But a chicken sandwich sure makes a swell snack. Especially when you put lots of Kraft mayonnaise on the bread. Mmm, the delicate flavor of Kraft mayonnaise is just exactly what you want. And Kraft mayonnaise is so creamy, rich, and smooth. Just try it. For a grand sandwich spread as well as for fine salads. There's nothing like true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. <laughs> Now back to the adventures of the folk. A half hour has passed since Mike Waring learned that with the recent death of Georgie Reynolds and the earlier demise of Dixie Taylor, the original quartet was now working as a duo on $100,000 worth of loose notes. And now as we rejoin the team of Mark and Hazel, they're making their entrance at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. But Hazel seems to be suffering with a bad case of stage fright. What's the matter, Angel? Having trouble? Uh... Guess I'm a little nervous. Oh, here, let me try. Ah, come in, folks. Louis. What do you expect? Shut the door, Waring. Look, Martinez. I said shut the door. Now raise them high. All right, you don't have to worry. I'm clean. I don't believe in taking chances. What's the matter? No sporting blood? Yeah, I guess I'm yellow. Too bad Georgie didn't have as much sense. Where is he? Move the club chair. What? Yeah, go on. He's behind it. That won't bring him back. You killed him? Well, while we are on this subject, where were you at 11.30? He was waiting for me in my apartment. Mm, nice. Look, you better watch that mouth. And you better watch yours. All right, Hazel, where is it? Where is what? The dough we got from Gallagher. I don't know. Don't give me that. I want it, honey bunch, and nothing's going to keep me from it, understand? I wouldn't count on that, Louise. What? No, no, no. Don't bother turning around, Martinez. It's only me. Listen, Saunders, don't mind if I do, Martinez, but first drop the gun. That's a sweetheart. You want me to pick it up? No, no, no. Don't trouble yourself, Waring. I can manage. Oh, what happened to Georgie? The same thing that happened to Dixie Taylor. And he was such a sweet guy, wasn't he? Oh, by the way, when I walked in here, Martinez was asking you a question. I don't remember your answering it. Would you like to now? You'll never see a penny of that money. Come on, come on, Hazel. We're wasting time. Where is it? You better tell him, Angel. I think he means business. I do, and make no mistake about it. Uh... It's under the middle cushion of the sofa. What? Stay where you are, Martinez. I'll do my own checking. Oh, now, isn't that pretty? Listen, Saunders. I'm afraid I haven't the time, Louis. You have to find it, Saunders. What? Get down, Hazel. Got enough, Saunders? 
Yes, he has. Oh, uh, hello, Sergeant. Hi, Mike. The inspector sent me around to apologize. Oh, what happened? Twenty minutes ago, a call came through from Philly that that Saunders they picked up there was this guy's cousin. I thought there was something screwy playing. Well, if you fellas don't mind. Uh, just a minute. Where are you going, Martinez? Well, I just figure it's no point of my hanging around just now. Well, you better get used to it, Louie. You're going to do quite a bit of it from now on. What are you talking about? You killed Dixie Taylor and George Reynolds. You're crazy. Well, maybe you're right. Here I've got you hanging when any kid knows that in New York they burn you. All right, Sergeant, prove it to him. Mike. Oh, don't say it, ain't you? But I was just going to ask... Ask me to explain things. Hmm? Well, yes. Well, I guess you're entitled to it. You see, this was a modern version of thieves falling out. When Louis Martinez saw how George double-crossed Saunders, it didn't take him long to figure that he was next. So he decided to beat your boyfriend to the punch. First he killed Dixie, which made it look bad for Saunders. And then to ensure his bet, he killed George. Then why did he wait at the house for us? Well, he had to. You were the only one who knew where the money was stashed. And until he got it, he committed two murders for nothing. Well, couldn't have Saunders have done that? Mm-mm. I knew Martinez was the killer long before Saunders ever showed up. How? But well, Martinez told us he hadn't called the police, so obviously there was no autopsy performed. Yet he knew exactly what poison killed George and the time he got it. Remember he told me over the phone that George had been fed a dose of strychnine an hour before I called? Mm -hmm. Well, now, how would he know that unless he was right there feeding it to him? Uh, shall I tell you something? I wish you would. I lied to you about loving George, you see. Otherwise, I was afraid you might suspect me. Oh, I couldn't afford to, Angel. Uh, why not? Well, you're much prettier than Martinez and Saunders. Oh, I, I don't understand. Well, you see, I figured to wrap up this case around midnight. And if you were guilty, what would I do for a date? <laughs> 